Science or art? Many argue that there is a stark difference between these two fields and they cannot coexist. That's why it's often difficult for many to choose a career between the two. In a particular case, Gwendolyn King has had the best of both worlds. She is a board certified medical physicist and the author of a fascinating children's book. She joins us today to tell us about her intriguing career exploring science and art. And uh, we were told that we could refer to her as Gwen, as, so that's yes, where it begins. Good morning and welcome. Welcome, Gwen. Gwen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It is a pleasure to meet you, and uh, you have a very, very extensive bio, and I can't wait to talk with you <laughs> about it. So Thank you so much. You're very welcome, and you're modest, too. Even before we begin that, uh, we want to talk about your experience growing up in Old World. Oh, it was just <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> You know, um, I, my memories, uh, I just have such wonderful memories of growing up in Old Road. You know, I call it the tiny fishing village. You know, um, we, um, as kids, my first few years of schooling, I went to the Old Road School. The school was close to the Methodist Church, so we used to walk. And, um, and then when Saturday rolled along, we all go to the beach and we stayed. We stayed on the beach all day. And so you swim, and you had the tubes, and you race with the tubes, and yeah. and um, and the beach was where the fishing boats came in, yeah. and that's where we sold fish. And um, I, I I remember going up um, Romney for grafted mangoes. We had yeah. to go up to Romney to get milk, and then we we, we used to hike a lot, you know. And so it's I I can remember Wingfield Road where. My brothers would make carts with these wheels, and then we get on the cart and we roll down, and you fall off. You know, it's it's just such wonderful memories. I often wish my son was able to experience that type of childhood. You know, innocent, freedom. Um, My I grew up with my grandmother. She cooked every day. We had to wait till the boat come in to get the fish. Mm. So we so get you the were fish. fish okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then she cooked. I can remember the breadfruit and rice. Mm. You know, I cut up the breadfruit. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and the cons. I love cons. I had to learn how to clean them to, yeah. to cook them, you know. Yeah. So it, it was, it was uh, you know, a very happy, happy childhood. Mm, nice, nice. Mm. And then for your secondary education, we see you moved on to the last year, sixth form? Yes, I did convent high school. Oh, okay. Um, and then um, when I graduated, I went to sixth form okay. for the, a, the old A levels. Yes. And then I graduated, and I didn't get a UE scholarship. You know, all my friends oh. got UE scholarship. And so I worked for a year, I okay. taught for a year, and then I um, went to the College of the Virgin Islands. Mm. And find a way to pay my way through college, and uh, so I was just I was just very fortunate because I was very good at math. Yeah, right. And um, when I was at the College of the Virgin Islands, um, one of the chemistry teachers says, "Why don't you do a bachelor's in chemistry?" And I said, "But I, I don't know chemistry. No one taught me chemistry at school." And and so I said, "Okay, fine." So I end up graduating with a degree in chemistry. Wow. And during my last two summers there, Howard University came by and invited students. There were four of us that left the College of Virgin Islands and went up to Howard for summer school. Oh, nice. And then I was given an assistantship to come do my master's at Howard. Nice. Wow. <laughs> do you see? It came at the right time. I think so. Yeah. Destiny. <laughs> it was a destiny, right? Yeah. I was about to say, all the stars seemed to align. Yeah. Yes, but as, at that time, I had no clue. <laughs> I just went along. Yeah, okay. And fortunately for me, um, while I was at Howard and I was doing my dissertation, my advisor asked me, said, oh, there's a job at the hospital. It's for a medical physicist. And I said, well, what is a medical physicist? I had no clue. And he said, oh, they'll teach you all you need to know. And that was my first job. Oh, nice. And I enjoyed the profession, and so I stayed in it. Nice. All right, so let's talk about that, because you didn't know what it was. So I don't want to say that you were green going into it, but the fact that you had to be taught, 
I want to know like a fly on the wall right now <laughs> about some of those first experiences that you had. Um, you know, uh, I, I was very fortunate that Howard was very um, encompassing. I was very welcomed by, by the employees and everyone was extremely helpful. And so I had to learn, I had to learn a lot because medical physics is not, it's now taught, but when I came through it was not taught in school. And so I got the clinical experience, but I also had to do the theory, which I had to do on my own and then ask questions. And, and so um, it was not easy, but I like what I was doing. I had patience interaction. I, I had, um, it was like family, you know, people care about you. And so, you know, I stayed in it. Mm. And it wasn't work for you. Yeah. It did work because I did like what well, I was Well, it worked doing. for you, but it wasn't work for you. It wasn't the No, 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 no. It was not. It was mm. not. It was mm. not. Yeah. So you're a certified by the board of, by the American Board of Radiology. Yes. Let me say that correctly. Yes. And you're also a full-time member of the American Associates yes. of Physicists in yes. Medicine. Uh, I remember when I was at Howard, um, the WAPM, which is the American Association of Physicists in Medicine, had a meeting in D.C. And um, we, we have, you have a local chapter and you have a national chapter. So I went to the local chapter's meeting, my first meeting, mm -hmm. and I met other physicists, other medical physicists. And um, so I got a call and said, hey, we have it on national meeting. Why don't you come? And so I went, and then I became a junior member, oh, nice. and then I became a full member. And um, then you had most today to work as a medical physicist, you must be board certified. Oh, okay. So um, it takes three years to okay. become board certified. Um, you have to do part one, which is general physics, part two, which is clinical physics. And then you have to do the orals. And okay. so I was very fortunate that when I, I first took my boards, I ran into this African-American physicist who mentored me in preparing for my boards. Mm -hmm. And I was very fortunate to be successful. Yeah, I'm looking at you speaking. Every time you talk of your accomplishments, your face light up. Congratulations <laughs> once again. <laughs> There's such... Humility. I don't know if anybody has ever told you about that aura, but there's such a warmth. That, you <laughs> know, you. I, I really do appreciate that. And as we talk about your rewards, because you've had mm -hmm. several, the first is that you were voted as an outstanding woman in America back in 1987. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, um, you know, it was very rare for black women to be in the field. Oh. Uh, the field was populated with Caucasians, Indians, Asians, and African men. And so there was just a few women, and um, they zeroed in on me and gave me the award, and I yeah. took it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, that's a great honor, indeed. Thank you. Thank you. In 1999, you also received the Black Achievers Award in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And you were also featured in the special section in the American Physical Society on uh, the status of women in physics section physics help in the battle of cancer tell us about those two words well it's, i think it's a similar concept okay. you know um, there were so few of us black female that was in the field and so um i was at working at the university of pittsburgh medical center um i was a senior physicist at mcgee women's hospital was a women's hospital and the word got around and they approached me and i say okay fine i'll do it and so it was an honor you know, I'm hopefully um, with these recommendation recognition um, <clears throat> inspires other young women to go in the field. Nice. Oh, definitely so, and I can see why you would say that. Uh, moving ahead to 2002, yet another award. You were recognized <laughs> as an award winner of the Women in Color and Health. Science and Technology yes. by Career Communication Group Special. Yes. What was that like? It was a similar uh, concept, you know, um, 
they were looking for women in sciences, and I happened to be a medical physicist. I can remember when my son went to the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, um, he knew his mom was a medical physicist, and the, um, the president of the university was talking, because he was a Mayo scholar, and he was talking to students, and he said, I am sure no one in this department knows a physicist. And he put his hand up, and he said, his name is Dean D. Whom do you know as a physicist? And he said, my mom. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, it was, it, you know, I am a physicist. And, and then he came home, and he says, mom, I didn't realize. <laughs> you know? And so um, they were looking for women who may have such accomplishments, and it just happened to qualify. <laughs> <laughs> You're so humble with all. I happen to fit. I happen to qualify. I love it. So congratulations Thank once you more on your achievements. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you. Figure out the transition or where did the transition occur and when did you develop this love for writing and storytelling? Yeah, I'm an avid reader. I've always read a lot from childhood. My grandmother used to tell me, Oh, you, you choose the darkest corner in the house to read, <laughs> you know, and, um, and you're going to wear glasses, of course. By the time I hit 16, I was wearing glasses. Um, but I, ha I, had, I have, not had, I have a great love for reading. Mm -hmm. And I'm a member of, for over close to I say 30 years, I'm mm -hmm. a member of a, read, a book club oh, nice. um, out of Pittsburgh. I joined it when I was in Pittsburgh called the Caribbean Book Club. Okay. And what I like about the book club is that we have some serious discussion about the books we read. We read a lot of black authors. And I would not have read the, the stuff I'm reading if I was not a member of that club. Okay. And because I'm an avid reader, I grew up in an environment where my grandmother told stories. Oh my God, at night you hear about big claw and little claw and, and, and um, something grow on a tree. Uh -huh. if, it's green, if it's yellow, it's, when it's green, it's very, very green. And when it's ripe, it's yellow, it has seeds and inside it's yellow. What is that thing? And so um, I always wanted to write, but I never found the time to do it. And so one time I was speaking with this very close friend of mine, um, Ian. He used to be commissioner of police, really. Okay. And I said, have, have, you, have you had stories told to you when you were growing up? And, uh, and then I, he said, no. I said, well, I had. And he said, what? Tell me. And he said, you should write. I said, and I said, I don't have the time. And I hung up and I wrote my first story. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and to swim like a fish. Yes. And, and the concept is that um, my grandmother used to say, and what's the moral of the story yes. after each story? So the concept for me is to teach something. And here's this little boy, Montclair, who loves the beach, and he wants to go to the beach, mm -hmm. and he cannot go to the beach without his parents. And, um, and he was wondering, why can't he swim like a fish? Mm -hmm. And so... The story is about discussing the difference between lungs and gills. We all need oxygen. Mm -hmm. So the fish get oxygen yes. from the water. We get oxygen from the air. We cannot, we cannot live in the other world, even though Black Panther says we can, if yes. you've seen the new Black Panther, yeah. and um, with our snorkels. And so his mother explained to him why he cannot swim like a fish. Mm -hmm. He needs all this equipment mm -hmm. in order to breathe on the water and swim <laughs> like fish. I can see the merging of science with your love for writing in that, even in that explanation. <laughs> I love it. I, I really was curious to know if you chose this title because you grew up in that fishing village called Old Road. <laughs> uh, you, you just may be right. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Uh, I just love the water. I have to have the water around me. And um, yes, probably subconsciously, I did that, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> growing up in a fishing village. Aww. Cute. I love the illustration. Yes, Aww. yes, yes. <laughs> so thank mom. you. You're the mom. <laughs> yeah. I told you. <laughs> Typical Caribbean yeah, yeah, mom. Yeah. <laughs> that is so sweet.
So let's speak about Gwen, the group that you formed this year. The Her conversations with, with the, the Caribbean, Caribbean diaspora. Yes. Um, this friend of mine asked me to do a presentation on cancer of the prostate. Okay. And it was a Zoom presentation. So I did it. But I was very, very, very surprised with the reception and the thirst for knowledge. Okay. And so I ended up doing a second presentation on cancer of the prostate. And then I said, you know, maybe I could form a group that disperse information because there's so many nationals who live in the diaspora. I'm not yes. talking about Sankis nationals, yes. but the Caribbean nas nationals. And they are so knowledgeable and they have such great expertise and they do not come back to the Caribbean because they cannot use that expertise. Like myself, you know, yeah. I can't work in St. Kitts as a medical physicist because we don't have a radiation oncology department. And so I call some of my friends, <laughs> you know, bouncing board, you know, I call Hermia, mm -hmm. Anthony, uh, Morton Anthony, I call yes. Anthony Morton. Morton Anthony, I call Estona, um, Ambassador Estona Brown. I call Ian, Ambassador Ian Creeley. And, and I say, what do you think? What do you think? And I have another good friend, Dr. Melvin Blanchard. And I say, what do you think? And they say, yeah, why not? Why not? Mm -hmm. And so I say, OK, OK, you're going to have to be members. And uh, so we create this group. We have a core group. We have 10 persons that make up the core group. You know, um, you have Hermia, Stoner, Ian. We also have Ambassador Dr. June Sumer. Okay. We have Eustace Wallace. We have Alfonso Bridgewater. Mm. Um, we have Randy Richardson, you know, because people ask to join the group, but we decide to keep the course 10 so that we can um, make decisions. Okay. We have Michelle Rani. Rani, she's a lawyer in New York. And so we meet every month and we discuss speakers and topics and so forth. And we've been very fortunate because we have people who love to present on that platform. And, um, and so we are scheduled out until July of 2023 with speakers. So I feel very blessed. Mm. And it's very easy to join. It's, you just need an invite. You don't have to register. Okay. We meet every last Sunday of each month. Okay. And um, we, um, the presentation is done every last Sunday of each month at 4 o'clock Eastern Caribbean time. Okay. So we have presented topics like um, Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. We present topics on the coronavirus, reparation. We, we had a presentation about financial security in the Caribbean. And, and I'm just very amazed of how many people will log on to the platform. And then we'll have these conversations that we had a two hour after conversations with financial security in the Caribbean. They were talking about cannabis and, um, you know, we grow it. Why aren't we commercializing it? Why aren't we making money on it? And um, it's, I learn a lot because I don't live in the Caribbean, and so I'm not tuned in to the nuances. Yes. And so this group really provides that nice. platform for conversations. And I just hope those of you out there will join us and get an invite, and we'll be happy to have you. Nice. Well, it's good to know. I want to segue back to your writing for nice. just a moment. Okay. <laughs> Because you're going to be doing some research. The writing is not over. Yes. Um, I've been, you know, normally when I come home, it's for four days or five days or probably a week because I have to go back to work, you know. And so now I'm retired. I'm home for a month. Good news. Yes, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and the goal is to, I like to write a Christmas series. My focus now is going to be on my writing, even though, I'm still working part-time. My old job asked me to be a PRN where um, as needed. So I'm not totally out of the field. I don't really, because I learned so much that the field is evolving. There's a new technology. And so you're always learning. 
And so I don't really want to be totally out of the field, but I have more time. And so while I'm here this month in St. Kitts, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I plan to do research on sports. The Maka Jumbi, the clowns, the mega business, the mansion book, <laughs> you know. And I would like to write a Christmas series around the history of these yeah. um, sports because I think um, it's something that should be captured. Yes. And I think kids need to learn their culture, whether they live here in the Caribbean or they live in the diaspora. And so when they come home and the clown is performing, hopefully they say, oh, mommy, you remember the book? Da, 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 da. Uh-huh. Yeah, the clown. The, the clown came from da, da, da. I, I'm just hoping that wow. that will be the case. And so I have my work cut out for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you so do, but I'm certain I'm that you will live hoping. up to the task. Yeah. I can't wait to, to read that. It's going to be very interesting. Yeah, yeah thank you. You'll see thank you evolve you. as an author as well. Yes. That would be great to see. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I like the fact that you're putting it out there of what the kid is going to say when they do get to yes. say kids yes. Yes. Carnival yes. in the future. You know, the reason I had that experience, um, I brought my son home. I think he was nine or ten. Mm-hmm. And uh, my dad took us up into the mountain, Wingfield Mountain. And I remember picking a guava and wiping it off on my pants mm-hmm. and biting into it. And he said, oh, no, 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 mommy, no. Yeah, I said, what's wrong? He said, but you didn't bite at the store. Mm-hmm. And it never occurred to me that in the States, we go to the store and we get all our food. But I never sat down and spoke to him where the food came from. Oh, okay. And so, so I had to explain to him that the food started on a tree, mm-hmm. you know, and da 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 yes. then it gets to the store. And I think <clears throat> kids come home and we take them to see the Makajambi. But has anyone ever explained to them the history of the Makajambi? Yeah. You know, and, and, and if you don't understand the history, you cannot build on it. And so that's, that's yeah. my thinking process. Nice.